Microsoft is not the company it used to be. Remember, if you will, Steve Ballmer, the then CEO in around June of 2001 said that Linux is a cancer. Microsoft tried for years to thwart the open source model and attack Linux head on. However, Microsoft have mellowed over the years and eventually they even admitted that they were wrong. These days, they embrace Linux. Microsoft's current CEO Satya Nadella even campaigned that quote, Microsoft loves Linux in 2015. Then the Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL, was released back in 2016, making it possible to run Bash and other Linux stuff on your Windows PC, even going as far as to allowing you to run a cut down version of Ubuntu in a terminal on your Windows desktop. Three years ago, Microsoft made the somewhat surprise acquisition of GitHub, the popular code hosting and development site, and they went on to port its now hugely popular development environment Visual Studio Code to Linux. In 2019, the Redmond rascal upped the WSL ante with WSL2 and included the Linux kernel right into Windows itself. And then, a few days ago, Microsoft really went all in. They released their own version of Linux. Yep, you heard me, that's right, Microsoft made their own freaking Linux distro. The oddly titled CBL Mariner was released with little fanfare, but it could have ramifications for Microsoft, you, and or the open source community. But will these ramifications be positive or negative? Let's discuss here on Al's Geek Lab. So the readme file available on GitHub says that CBL Mariner is an internal Linux distribution for Microsoft's cloud infrastructure and Edge products and services. It continues, CBL Mariner is being shared publicly as part of Microsoft's commitment to open source and to contribute back to the Linux community. So firstly, what's with the name? Well, CBL stands for Common Base Linux, and Mariner is the code name they're going with for this 1.0 release, kind of like how Cobalt is the code name for the upcoming Windows 11 release. Now, whilst CBL is available for download immediately from GitHub, you'll be hard pressed to find something that constitutes a Linux distro like download. Most of us are well versed with going to websites like ubuntu.com and downloading an ISO image, but no such image is available on the Mariner GitHub site. Instead, at the moment, you need to download a fair few gigs worth of stuff and then run a lengthy build process. In the end, if you follow the steps right, then you'll get an ISO image that you can boot the installer from. Under the hood, CBL Mariner seems to be a hodgepodge of the Red Hat based Fedora Linux distribution as it uses Red Hat's popular RPM packages. However, it notably also borrows from the Linux distro by VMware called Photon OS. Photon OS introduced the tDNF installer, which is the tiny version of Red Hat's DNF package manager, the replacement for yum. tDNF is written in C and doesn't have Python dependencies, which makes it a little bit more lightweight than DNF is in Fedora. Software packages for Mariner can be generated from spec files or from source as well. Microsoft CBL is designed from a minimalist, cloud-ready perspective and can be deployed as a container or as a VM. This makes it sit as a contender for the likes of Red Hat's Fedora Core OS, Rancher OS, and Ubuntu Core. It consumes very limited disk and memory resources. Microsoft went on to say that the lightweight characteristics of CBL Mariner also provides faster boot times and a minimal attack surface. Checking the requirements, I found that it is indeed lightweight. Boot times are pretty good as well, but um, all it required is one CPU, 0.5 gig of RAM, I think you could even get it running on less, and eight gig uh, of disk is sufficient to get it running with rudimentary workloads. Now, when I say that CBL Mariner is a minimalist distro, I'm not taking into the account of the things like Slackware or Arch or with i3WM. No, I'm talking absolutely zero graphical user interface here, completely command line driven. In fact, the 2000 odd package software repository for Mariner doesn't include 
any graphical applications or X server app at all. That's totally deliberate, by the way, that just like the other container and cloud server Linux distros I mentioned just a moment ago. Now, from what I can glean, Microsoft is pretty serious about the security of this minimalist distro. Out of the box, it features tamper resistant logs, a hardened kernel, address space layout randomization, ASLR for short, compiler based hardening and signed updates. So anyway, we've heard all about it now. But what is it all about? Why are Microsoft getting into making distros, especially when there are plenty of distros already out there? Well, there's a few reasons, and these, these are my guesses. Number one, it's probably likely that CBL will replace Ubuntu as the default distro with Windows subsystem for Linux in the future. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It'll mean that it's tightly coupled with Windows so that it'll provide all of the necessary services that a developer might want out of the box. Number two, the internet of things. IoT is the future, or so everyone keeps saying. Microsoft are riding the wave of the internet integration in a big way, and all you need to do is log into Azure at the moment, and you'll see lots of tutorials about how uh, to use a Azure to power your IoT product or your project. The reality though, IoT devices, from things like sensors in your fridge to your toddler's cot monitor are small, cheap, low power, low memory devices. Windows Server in every incarnation is too big and heavy an operating system to realistically power these devices. It makes perfect sense then to have a minimal Linux distro running on these devices and 99.9% .9 of them already do. Microsoft are betting that that isn't going to change anytime soon. So this is a perfect way for Microsoft to still have a little bit of a control over this market. Number three, cloud services. So by far and away, the main reason Microsoft might be making their, their change and make me making their own Linux distro is to provide a Microsoft spin for lightweight cloud services. AWS have their own Amazon Linux, which can operate as a minimalist distribution. And rather than having a full fat distribution with all the bells and whistles that you, that you have, like X11 and all the, the packages and so forth, when all you need is the kernel and a few choice tools to get an application running, a minimalist distribution is ideal for the cloud, especially if you want to run in a container as well. So there are naysayers out there. Those of you that still reckon that Microsoft are the enemy, and want to crush open source with every pass. And the current strategy is to bring death to Linux by crushing it with kindness. However, Microsoft's been making steady contributions to the Linux world since at least 2015, and there hasn't been anything done particularly by them to hurt Linux. Could this particular move hurt Linux? I personally, I highly doubt it. Microsoft are rolling their own distro because it suits Microsoft's own product roadmap. That's true. But a super secure, minimalist distro that's funded by big pockets, if anything, will just normalize Linux a bit more, just in the way that WSL did when it brought Bash to Windows. We now have developers across the world making a cross-platform open source software that they're able to do from a Windows PC. Microsoft opened up Linux to a whole new generation of developers and by extension, consumers by taking these actions. So surely, that can't really be a bad thing, can it? Recently, Brian Lunduk, I was listening to his Linux Sucks 2021 presentation, um, where the, the main topic, I guess, was the end of Linux is nigh. And whilst he does make a point that Google's new operating system, Fuchsia, which is being released for IoT devices such as the Nest this year, will, over time, draw an audience away from Linux. Just because a few companies are doing their own thing, Linux isn't going any away anywhere fast, especially if companies like Microsoft are doubling down on it and going to such efforts as to port software to it and now roll their own distributions of it. So what are your thoughts? Are Microsoft out there to rid the cancer that is Linux from within Redmond? Or are they spreading their love of Linux across the world in many tiny little Linux instances? Let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on that. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, give me the thumbs up and pressing that notification bell. Until next time, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you later.